Now, thanks for coming this afternoon. If you if you've just joined joined us, thanks very much for coming, and thanks for those who have already been here this afternoon already. Now, we're going to read one verse from God's Word, and it's found in Isaiah, and it's chapter number one. And I'm sure you know the verse I'm going to read from is verse number 18. It's a lovely verse. It's, I think, well, it's one of my favourite verses. Not because I was saved through it, but my wife, she was saved as a result of this verse. And she was saved in the first gospel meeting she was in in her life. She never knew the gospel up to that time. She was 16 years of age. She went to this meeting, and I, I, I don't think it was through the preaching. It was through this lady giving an invitation at the end of the meeting. And her name was Mrs. Topping. She was, she was connected to her sister, Christine Pollard. She was her mom. And she gave, she uh, asked to, if any of the girls would like to wait behind, and Trisha waited that night. I'd love to tell you the whole story, but it's a lovely story. Anyway, Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18, and this is what Isaiah says to us. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be like wool. Now we're looking to the Lord to bless this verse to us this afternoon. This is a favorite verse. It's a lovely verse. You know, in Isaiah chapter number one, we're in a courtroom. And God is bringing indictments before his people, not before us, although they apply to us today, but before his earthly people, Israel. And he's bringing these indictments to them. And he's speaking of the sins that they were very, very guilty of. He speaks, first of all, of the sin of rebellion. He, he speaks about that in verse 2. He says, the Lord has spoken, I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. You know, the people of Israel, they had no reason to rebel. They had been nourished up by God. God had brought them out of Egypt. He had brought them through the wilderness. He had brought them into the land of Israel, the land of Canaan, which ultimately became the land of Israel. And there they were, they were they were mightily blessed of the Lord, but they had rebelled against them. That's a wee bit like us. You know, we're really unthankful, and we are sinners, and we are rebellious. And then he speaks about the, un, the, the ingratitude. He speaks about, the in verse 3, about the ox that knoweth its owner, you know, the, the very farm animals. They know, they know their owner, but he says, my people doth not consider. And we're a wee bit of that as well. We have, we don't show the same gratitude as we should. And down through this particular, down through these verses, he brings before them indictment after indictment. That is, he brings before them their lack of gratitude to him. And, 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 and so he speaks. But then he gives out this grand invitation. What an invitation it is. He says, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, or, 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 though they be, your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be like red like crimson, they shall be as wool. What a lovely invitation coming from the heart of God. I'd just like to speak of this invitation. You know, the Bible is full of this word come. 
the word that begins this invitation here, it's a word that occurs from the, from the first book in our Bible to the, to the last book. You'll remember the people, they were possibly just like this people that we have read of in Isaiah chapter 1. They were a people who were sinners. And they were deeply dying in it that God decided one day just to remove them from the face of the earth. But he didn't want to, he didn't want to remove them without, first of all, giving them his invitation, giving them his message. And there was a man called Noah. And Noah, he was instructed to make an ark. And he built this ark. It took over a hundred years to build. And he built it so large that it contained a whole, a, a, whole, a whole group of people, and it also contained lots of animals in it, that the earth would go back to its, 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 as a place of generation and regeneration, and there would be folk, there would be folk left on the earth to inhabit it. But you know, before the folk went into the ark, and when the ark was just built, God says, come thou. Come thou and all thy house into the ark. He said, I want to save you. I want to, I want to be your savior. I want to repopulate the earth with folk like you. And so he says, come. And in the last book of the Bible, John is about to, he's about to view things that would have been horrendous to us and God says I want you to escape all that he says come up he says to John he says come up to heaven come out of this scene altogether this scene that's only fit for judgment he says come right up to heaven and then the gospels that's in, that's halfway through the bible he says to another people or people that were weary and sad with sin he says come Unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know, God, he wants to, he wants to bless you this afternoon. He doesn't want to judge you. You know, there will come a time when he'll need to say, depart. You know, there'll be a time when the last gospel message will be preached. There will come a time when the door of opportunity will be closed. And you know, there'll, be, there'll come a time when, when the folk will stand outside that door and knock, and they'll ask to be admitted, but God will say, your day of opportunity is over. Depart. But you know, his favorite word, I believe, is the word come. And so he's speaking to this people, and he says, come Come unto me, or come and let us reason together, saith the Lord. And he, he tells us, he tells them his terms. I'd like to say it's an urgent message as well, because God says, come now. Come now. You know, God could see much further than they could see. And you know, I'd like to say kindly this afternoon, that God can see further than you can see. And he can see further than I can see. And he can see things that are going to happen upon this earth. You know, that wouldn't it be pleasant for us to live under. And so he says, he's come out with his invitation and he says, come now. There is a verse in the Bible that speaks about the judgment of God. It's found in our New Testament. It's a verse that makes me cringe every time I hear it. He said, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You know, God doesn't want us to be judged by him. He wants to save us. And so God is asking us presently. He's asking us at this very moment. He says, come now. Come now and let us reason together. I think it's very good to see 
that God is a reasoning God. And he's a reasonable God. He is a God with whom, with whom he, wants to, he wants to speak to you. He wants to bring his terms to you. I, I'd like to say he's not inviting us to a debate. He, he's not inviting us to negotiate with him. You know, he's not putting terms on the table and you can choose to despise him. You can choose to ignore them. He's going to put his terms on the table. He says, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. No one swear. We stood on the top of Herman one day, I think it's about five, maybe six, maybe seven, eight years ago. We stood on the top of Herman and I remember looking at the snow and, you know, it was pure white. And the sun was shining upon it. And, you know, I, I thought of the God that had created the snow. He says, he says, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. You know, these two words that he uses for sins here, scarlet and crimson, you know, they, are, they really speak to us of a dye. A dye that comes from a worm. And, you know, once, it, uh, once your garments are stained with this dye, well, humanly speaking, they could never, ever be white again. But, you know, God's, God is going to whiten up these garments that are stained, even with these dyes. He's going to make them white again. He's going to make them as if they, as if they never had the stain at all about them. That's the God we have to deal with today. We've got a God who is interested in our safety. And so he says, come now and let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, he says, he says I'm going to make them as white as snow. Of course, we, we've got a part to play in that. We need to repent. We need to ask him for forgiveness. That's why he's saying, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And then he uses an unusual term. He says, though they be like crimson, they shall be as wool. And I was just speaking to my wife before coming out. She had difficulty with this expression. But it's, it really speaks about the removal of the wool from the back of the sheep. It speaks about the shearer coming and taking the wool from the sheep. And he says that, you know, your sins, though they be like crimson, they'll be like wool, they'll be removed totally. They'll be removed from you. You know, you'll not have to, you'll not have to own them any longer. They'll be taken away. You know, it's, there's a lovely verse in the New Testament that speaks about the work of the Lord Jesus on behalf of our sin. And here's what it says. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, cleanseth us from all sin. That is, every sin we could commit, though it be like crimson, though it be like scarlet. Those stains, they cannot be removed by humans. You know, God, he's going to clear us of our debt. He's going to clear us of our sin. Remove the stain totally. And how's he going to do it? He's going to do it by the death of his son. You see, when the Lord Jesus went to Calvary, because that's all involved in the blood you know, when that blood was shed, it was shed upon the cross. And the Son of God, he bore the wrath for our sins. And the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, it has, it has come into action in my life. And maybe it's come into action in your thinking today. 
you could be cleared of that sin. You could be absolutely, totally forgiven because the blood of Jesus Christ has been shed. It's lovely just to think of that. There's a story that I always connect with that verse. It concerns a man, I heard him on tape once, never met him. There was a lady in our meeting back in Shield Hill and, and she had met this gentleman, Tom Hamlin. He was a scripture reader and he, his father, his father, he abused the family. He maltreated them. And there was one day his brother, Tom's brother, was washed up on the Dutch coast. And the only way they could rec the only way they could identify him was through the scars he had in his body, inflicted by the father that he had. His father was just an obnoxious man. But Tom got saved and he managed to get this father along to the meeting one day. And the father got saved. He got saved in the meeting. And of course, he had, he had inflicted wounds on his wife or on the woman he was living with anyway. He had inflicted wounds on her and he inflicted wounds on all the family. He was just, he was just a, a, well, he was an alcoholic. And he, he just lost sense of all propriety. And you know, when this man, after he got saved, he was coming home from the meeting and he was going along the road and at every lamppost he would stop and he would say to his, his son Tom, he said, Tom, are all my sins forgiven? And Tom would say, look, Father, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, cleanseth us from all sin. And then he would come to the next lamppost and he would go through the same again. Tom, are you sure my sins are all forgiven? And Tom would say, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, cleanseth us from all sin. And at every lamppost on the way home, he would stop and he would ask the same question and he'd be told the same answer. My friend, the work of Christ is all prevailing. It can cleanse from every sin. There's another verse I love in the scriptures, and it's this. As far as the east is from the west, God has removed our sins from us. You know, you, I, I'm told you can, you can measure the distance from the South Pole to the North Pole but you cannot measure the distance between the east and the west. You know, if you go further east, there is still yet another point you could say was the east. And when you go that distance again, you come to another point and you could still look eastward. Because you see, no matter where you take your bearings from, there is always a further point east and a further point west. What God is saying in that verse is, as far as the east is from the west, he's removed them from us by an immeasurable distance that we cannot calculate. What a God he is. And he's able to do that because his son died on Calvary and he shed his precious blood. You see, we could never, ever have done that. And that's where this verse comes into play. God is saying to you today, come now and let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. You know, God is, God is going to do something that man cannot do. God is going to whiten our, our sinful heart. He's going to whiten us that we are made righteous before them. He's going to whiten us. And though our sins, and, and, and though they be like crimson, you know, he says he, he's, going to, he's going to get rid of them altogether. What a God he is. 
is able by the precious blood of his son to take away every stain. And so let me just finish with this. He's able to deliver us from all condemnation. Because who could condemn a righteous man? A man who's made righteous by the blood of Christ. You know, there's no condemnation for us now. That's another verse that we could have quoted. But he's able to make us perfectly, utterly, eternally clean through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. So let's listen to this verse again. He was speaking to this nation of Israel, this nation that had been so rebellious, so ungrateful. You know, they had done, they had committed these sins which are listed for us from verse 1 to verse 17. And now he comes out and he says, come now. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. You know, they'll be totally gone. And we'll be, we'll be, upon us will be conferred the righteousness of God. And you know, there's no, there's no doubt about that, that we'll be in heaven by and by. What a savior he is. And what an invitation comes to us today. I call it the grand invitation of scripture. And we trust that you will come and heed this invitation. We come that you'll come and yield to the Lord Jesus. You'll come and you'll reason with God. And God will make us the very things he promises here. He'll make us as white as snow. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts today. Let us pray. Lord gracious Father, again we bow before thee. We thank you, O God, for the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, O God, for the journey he took in coming from heaven and coming down here and coming down on account of us. O God, who would have done that apart from him? O God, we praise you for the great love and the great affection he had for us in doing this work. Oh God, we thank you for Calvary. We thank you for the place where he died and shed his precious blood that we might be eternally cleared of all our sin and guilt. We praise thee for him. We ask thy blessing to be upon us as we would part now. We pray in you, Lord God, if there's someone and they're just on the brink of repenting of their sin, that thou wilt give them that grace and that encouragement to do it. And that God, we pray that someone might enter into the joy of sins forgiven. Oh God, come amongst us in a mighty way. Do a work that we could not do. And that God, we pray that there might be a soul may go out of this meeting this afternoon, having trusted in the Lord Jesus. We offer you our thanks again for this time we have spent together. And we thank thee for the great work that the Savior did in order that we might be cleared of every stain. We praise thee for him. We thank thee in his lovely and ever precious name. Amen. I'd just like to